what's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be answering a question of the community that you guys had raised to me. Is it worth being a vampire? What has changed from the vampire? And so on and so forth. What playstyles are good for vampirism? What playstyles are bad for vampirism? What are the changes? Will it be good again? And so on and so forth. But before we jump into it, there is only seven more days of April. I think. I can't actually remember if there's a 30th or a 31st of April. I could look, but I don't, um, I don't, I don't want to restart the video, so we'll just assume there's seven more days. I don't want to count my knuckles either, but what that means to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment on any video. You can leave as many comments as you want, as long as they're somewhat coherent on as many videos as you so choose to. Because I want to give back the ad revenue that I get on these videos back to you guys uh, so that you guys can get ESO Plus, Crowns, or whatever you guys would choose. So, that's all you have to do. You just have to leave a comment. You don't even have to like and subscribe. It would be really cool if you did. I think about 20-ish percent of you guys are subscribed. So, if you want to subscribe, you know, you get, you can come around and, you know, see those uh, daily uploads. Uh, because we are back to hopefully being daily uploads. Uh, I apologize for the hiatus. I had something come up that I had to go handle. And unfortunately, took two days. And I'm just very glad to be back and not having to deal with that <laughs> currently. Uh, but yeah, we are going to go jump into the video. So, to become a vampire, there's three basic ways you can do it. You can either buy it from the crown store, get bitten by a player, or get bitten by an NPC. We're not going to dwindle too much on this because 99% of you guys know how to become a vampire. But if you do not know how to, my suggestion would be is ask someone to go bite you. They'll take you to a shrine such as this one inside of Bankarai or one of the other two third player zones. And you'll get bitten. Bada bing, bada boom. So, let's talk about play styles that are good for vampirism. You can see this guy was actually building a bomb to uh, use this. So, PvP bombing is, you know, a uh, way to use it. This character is actually not done yet, but I forget what stage I was in using him. But, let's forget about that for a second. Let's talk about other uses for vampirism. Because you guys are always wondering, what are some good uses? Now... Let's talk about PvE aspects of vampirism and why it's not so good anymore. So, mist form used to be broken. And there's probably a word in here that you guys could probably pick out if you read it very closely as to why it's no longer good for PvE. And I'll give you guys just, just a second to see if you can find that word. Did you find it? Well, they added the word from players by 75%. What does that mean? That means that when you go into a dungeon or a trial, instead of being able to taunt or damage mitigate uh, PvE aspects, it doesn't. It only now is coded from players, so it doesn't even work for the environment, which is absolutely insane. Uh, there's a whole controversy about this. Basically, uh, people were using it, I don't, I'll make sure to phrase this carefully, cheese certain aspects of the game, according to the developers, according to players, they were just capitalizing on unfair mechanics, essentially. Uh, so take either with a grain of salt for what you will. I'm not going to get into the whole debate on whether or not Veteran Rock Grove is impossible to do the hard mode without mist form or whatever, because um, I've never even done the, the hard mode for the final boss or the second boss. I forget which boss it was used for. I think it was actually used for the Atronaut, if I'm not mistaken. But, whatever, you know. That is going to be the biggest change. Now, I do actually like Vampirism, though, for something actually really interesting for PvP. And that is... Let me see if I can find it. Sprint Sneak. Unnatural Movement. Now, you have to have level 10 to get the second one of this. And you can see that I'm basically filled with this character. Uh, if you look at the bottom right corner... But I haven't finished him just quite on yet. But this is actually really OP. Why is this OP? Well, this is really nice because, for example, when you're a vampire stage 4, you can sprint into stealth. Why is that good for PvE? Two big reasons. One, if you're doing quests, sometimes it's really nice to just be able to run past everything, get to a door, and go on into the next area. That might seem like a very mundane use. That might seem very minute, but I promise you it is very nice. 
Especially, too, if, like, a chest pops out. You don't have to kill all of the mobs around it because they're not going to lock on to you. You can just pop lock it and keep on sprinting. And then the second reason is, is for stealth and, and, you know, for actual, um, like, heists, for thievery mechanics, pickpocketing. Essentially, you have a base, a great get away from the guards free um, ability. Now, for other PvE usage, now, some people, you could still build a PvE tank, uh, basically because of this undeath, level 2, uh, reduces your damage taken based on... Uh, up to 30% based on your missing health. It's okay. Um, there's still, you know, builds and such that recommend it. It's just not as good as it was just based on the champions uh, or the, um, the skill re redo. Here we are going to look at the differences for what happens when you get to level 1 through 4. Also, another question you guys asked is what is level 5? And level 5 comes when you use the Blood Scion and you have the Morph for it. So what level 5 is, is you have all of the benefits of level 4. So in theory, that is your you know reduced vampire ability costs. You have none of the drawbacks, so no health recovery decreases, no flame damage decreases, and no regular cost ability increases. None of that's going to happen. You'll just have the nice vampire ability cost. And now this is where it becomes really interesting, is vampirism is actually very popular for PvP. Why is that? Well, the same logic goes, one, you also have Strike of the Shadows, but... Unnatural movement is also pretty OP for PvP as well. Being able to sprint sneak, especially in places like the Imperial City, can be really good. It's also very popular in places like Battlegrounds too. Obviously, you'll still have to work around, you know, the the drawbacks of the flame damage, but and the regular ability costs. But when you are a Nightblade generally, or even sorcerers take you know really good advantage of this. You can easily work around these kind of shortcomings because you have an amazing tank, you have a stun, you have a heal, and an attack. That's spammable, I should say. You also have the ability to use this if you're trying to uh, you know, attack people and gank them. And then you have Eviscerate, which is an amazing spammable as well. The only thing I don't like about this is it's a Magicka melee one. But... You also have the nice ability here will always be a critical strike while cast uh, under half health. Or if you wanted, you could go with this. Um, it does more damage based on missing health. This is pretty decent. Uh, but again, you're also going to be costing health to cast it. So you just have to be a little careful when you start getting you know a little crazy with these. And then this thing will basically pop all your stats back up. Uh, because most people forget this. is So say you have like a passive skill that's like, gives 2% extra stamina. That's going to then go off of that 10,000. So all of those little buffs of 2%, 5%, 6%, 7%, whatever, that's going to then stack on that 10,000, 10, and you're going to get way more than 10,000, which to me is really nice. And you heal for all the damage you deal. This is even the more version. So this is a very, very cool ability. I really like this ability a lot for PvP. And it can make, um, I've seen Dragon Knights and um, Sorcerers and Nightblades use it. I've even seen Templars use it. The only people that really avoid it are Necromancers, because Necromancers basically also have a version of this that they can already use. But it just depends. I see Scion get used at a decent frequency inside of uh, PvP. But that's going to kind of wrap up my total thoughts for Vampirism. Is it good? Is it bad? It's just one of those things that, it can be either. It's one of those, like, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just that it's not going to make you broken. And there are drawbacks. Unlike being a werewolf, which essentially has no drawbacks, uh, ex except that it costs skill points. And being in werewolf form has some drawbacks. But if you're not in werewolf form, what are the drawbacks? That's very different than vampirism. And that's why I wanted to make this for you guys. Is a lot of you guys are confused because werewolf, very straightforward. Vampirism, you yeah, know, it's a little more, you know, tricky. You still can build, you know, two bar builds. Uh, you know, obviously werewolves can't bar swap. So there's so much more like variables to consider when it comes to vampirism. And that's why it was a, a good to kind of talk about this. 
Uh, but again, you know, it's got really almost no PVE usage anymore, except for kind of niche builds that people will recommend it just based off of essentially the ability to reduce your damage taken based on your missing health. And uh, that's about it. Pretty much everything else is good for PvP purposes, but you just have to be careful because then you're going to be really relying on your vampire abilities. Now you can see, once you start getting up there, a vampire ability cost minus 24% is pretty ridiculous. But you're going to be needing abilities that also aren't that too. So you're then going to be paying 12% more for that. So you really have to weigh the pros and the cons. But again, it's something fun to try. And you can always get yourself healed. You can always put it into a build in the armory. It's not something that's going to be the end of the world if you made your character a vampire. And you're like, oh my god, I keep getting flame wheeled and flame clenched and lava whipped and dragon left. That's flame damage everywhere. You'll be fine. And you can cure yourself if you don't like it. But, um, you know, that'll wrap up my thoughts on vampirism. I hope this was helpful uh, because it's, there's not a whole lot of vampirism discussions anymore. There are changes coming into the next pts currently i'm going to wait however until it's actually in the official version of the game because they change things on the pts so i don't want it to be like well that never came out so if you guys want an updated discussion on that after those you know notes are kind of officially released and edited i'll do that for you guys and again we tomorrow are going to be starting the series where i look at the weekly golden vendors and then determine you know, if there's anything in there you guys should get and my thoughts on those pieces, because that is a series that you guys suggested. And if you have other suggestions for weekly content, monthly content, ideas, suggestions, comments, concerns, areas that confuse you, please leave them in the comments below. And that is going to be my daily question of the day is, is what ESO question do you have that has just never been answered? It could be a lore question. It could be a game mechanic question. It could be anything that you want it to be is a very open-ended question. So I'm going to leave that with you guys, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.